Stars Wars, and or is a Disney Plus original created by Tony Gilroy, following the story of a thief turned rebel and spy, Cash and Andor. Although the show was just released last year, it is a prequel to the movies Rogue One in 2016 and the original Star Wars of 1977. So, without further ado, this is episodes 1 to 6 of the political science and spy fiction series, Andor. Five years before the Battle of Yavin, a man named Cassian Ander goes to a brothel in the Preox Morlana corporate zone in Morlana 1 to look for his younger sister Carrie. At this time, the brothel keeper entertains him as soon as she sees him, pissing off two sentry guards, one of whom is a squad commander. But Cassian has no time to deal with any of them, so he gets straight to the point and asks the keeper if a canary girl is working at the brothel. According to the keeper, there was indeed a canary girl that worked there, but she already left a few months back. Cashin asks for the name of the girl, yet the keeper points out that nobody is giving their real names at the brothel. Due to this, Cashin leaves the brothel empty-handed. But to his surprise, the two Imperial guards follow him outside and ask for his identification, stating that outsiders are prohibited in the corporate zone. Cashin knows that the guards are just power-tripping and will extort money from him so he fights back as soon as he gets the chance. However, he accidentally kills one of the guards, leaving him with no other choice but to take out the other one as well. The following day, the incident reaches Chief Hine due to the report made by Deputy Inspector Karn. Unexpectedly, Hine orders Karn to make another incident report, which writes the incident as a case of an unfortunate misadventure. Hine says the guards were in a brothel and drinking which are both prohibited for the likes of them. So, to keep their good image, he wants Karn to fabricate a story on how the two guards died helping someone. However, despite being given a direct order by the chief, Karn proceeds with his investigation. Later on, he orders the release of a bulletin that a Canary man is wanted for questioning. Meanwhile, in a free trade sector in the Morlani system called Ferrix, a droid named B2EMO, also known as B, heads out to a ship in the scrapyard, waking Cashin up. Speaking of whom, he is dreaming about his sister Carrie and the time when a Republic era vessel crashed not far away from their village that was full of kids and young adults back in Canary. Upon waking up, Cashin immediately patches up his knuckles while asking B if somebody came looking for him last night. According to B, his friend Brasso was looking for him, but his adoptive mother, Marva, said that he was out looking for trouble again. Hearing this, Cashin tells B not to tell anyone that he sees him or that he knows where he is. After that, he meets with Brasso and asks him to cover up for him if anybody asks where he was last night. Then, he goes to his other friend and also ex-lover, Bix to tell her that he has an item that her buyer will love, referring to an untraceable NS9 Starpath unit. Cashin insists that he's in dire need of credit, so he convinces Bix to call her buyer right away. In that sense, she goes to Salman's and uses the hidden communicator to reach her buyer. Shortly, Cashin bumps into Nurchi who's asking for the payment for his debt. Yet he just reasons out that he's still working on it and heads straight to the shipyard to change the ID chip log of the ship he used last night. There he's spotted by Pegla who refuses to lend him the ship once more, not wanting to get any trouble from his boss. Some time later, Cashin gets home and Marva alerts him about the bulletin that was released by the authorities, meaning that it's spread all over Ferrix already. She asks who else knows that he was from Canary, but Cashin swears that only the people he trusts know about it. Just then, B informs Cashin that Bix is trying to contact him. Because of that, he goes to meet her and she immediately asks what he did. After explaining what happened, Cashin says that he will just sell her the item because he needs the credits as soon as possible for him, Marva, and B to get out of Ferrix. However, Bix points out that the buyer is already coming and calling the deal is off the table. Due to that, he will have to wait until morning to get his credit. Unfortunately, Bix's current partner, Tim, has already reported Cashin to the authorities after seeing them, thinking that he and Bix are getting back together. Hence, Three more guards led by Sergeant Mosk under the command of Karn go to Ferrix the next day, just as a mysterious old man. Meanwhile, Marva goes into Cashin's room and finds his old weapon. In a flashback, young Cashin went with a group to check it out, leaving Carrie behind. Arriving at the crash site, they see several dead bodies lying around so their leader went down to get a closer look. However, she didn't notice that there was still one crew member that was alive, causing her to die as he shot her. This caused the other kids to attack the man until he was no longer breathing. Acting quickly, the kids took their leader back to their village, not noticing that young Cashin stayed behind. As it turns out, Cashin went inside the ship out of curiosity and started venting his anger. At that time, Marva and her late husband, Clem, found Cashin. 
They were looting the ship before the authorities could show up when Marva unexpectedly took cash in despite Clem's protest, stating that the kids' village would be in trouble because they killed a Republic officer. Going back to the present, Bix greets the old man named Luthen, who turns out to be the buyer. She informs him of Cashin's trouble so Luthen wastes no time and goes to meet him immediately. At the same time, the Premor guards are getting undesirable looks from the locals of Ferrix. This then just gets worse when they rudely enter Marva's house and start questioning the old woman about Cashin's whereabouts. Yet, Marva doesn't get intimidated by their uniforms and keeps her mouth shut. However, Cassian contacts her through B at a very bad time as Karn and the other guards hear him. After locating where he is, Karn leaves two guards to keep an eye on Marva and heads out to capture Cassian. Seeing this, Salman's son Lilliman tells his father about it, who then alerts Bix next. She's about to warn him when Tim tries to stop her, making her realize that it was him who ratted Cassian out. Salman, on the other hand, rushes outside and starts banging metal scraps in a pattern that is followed and copied by other people as if they're warning everybody that something terrible is about to happen. Not long after, Bix runs into some Primor guards, and because she's running and acting suspiciously according to them, they restrain her. Later on, Tim witnesses this and asks the guards what is happening. One of them warns him to stop, but as he continues to approach Bix, he gets shot by another guard, killing him in an instant. Due to that, the guard that shot him is sent back to their ship and is ordered to get it into the air. However, he doesn't realize that their pod has been anchored to a large metal scrap, causing it to get caught in a building and crash. Concurrently, Luthen just arrives at the factory where Cashin is waiting for him. The two start negotiating for the price until Luthen asks how he stole the item from a naval base. In turn, Cashin points out that it's actually easy to steal from the Empire because they don't really bother looking at others, especially those below their status. They're too busy looking proud of themselves that they just don't care. At this time, Luthen finally reveals that he came to Ferrix for Cashin and not the item, stating that he knows things about him like how his adoptive father, Clem, was hanged by a power-tripping Imperial Guard. Hearing this, Cassian pulls out his gun and suddenly becomes cautious around Luthen, questioning who he is. Without answering the question, the old man invites Cashin to come with him to fight the Empire for real. Just then, they hear the guards coming and realize that they're being surrounded. Luckily, Luthen rigs the door on his way in and it explodes in the guards' faces. A shootout then takes place as Cassian attempts to go back for the item. Luthen tells him to forget about it and they escape to find a vehicle to go to the old man's ship. Karn and the others get the report about Cashin and Luthen's retaliation, so they take their positions and wait for the two to appear. But without Karn noticing, the two suddenly emerge and restrain him. A car then bursts out of a garage and the guards empty their guns as they fire into it until it explodes. But to their surprise, it turns out to be a decoy as Cashin and Luthen actually ride a speeder to Luthen's ship. Looking around, Karn stares into the Primor guards in utter defeat as his dream of putting Cashin to justice just crumbles before his eyes. In the meantime, Luthen is taking Cashin to Aldani. At this point, Cassian clarifies that he just agreed to go with him to save himself and not because he's joining his side. Luthen then points out that the Imperial Guards will keep hunting him so it's better to join the fight that has a cause. And to further convince him, the old man says he will pay him. Intrigued, Cashin asks what the job is. According to Luthen, he will be part of a team that will steal the quarterly payroll for an entire Imperial sector, and completing it will get him 200,000 credits in return. Meanwhile, in Coruscant, which is the capital of the galaxy, the officers of the Imperial Security Bureau are currently having a meeting. Major Partagast, the head Imperial officer of the ISB, compares rebellion to disease and calls the ISB the healthcare providers. Later on, he brings up the incident on Ferrix and asks Lieutenant Blevin for an update since Morlana 1 is his sector. In turn, Blevin notes that several people died, properties were damaged, and a recovered Imperial Starpath unit was initially stolen from them. Hearing this, Lieutenant Dedra takes an interest as the Starpath unit turns out to be stolen from her sector. After confirming this, she asks Partagas to give her permission to investigate, but Blevin insists that Morlana 1 is his sector. Yet, Detra points out that she's been noticing a pattern in all the recent thefts in the Empire, stating that it can be used to fuel anti-imperial activities. However, since she has no concrete evidence just yet, Partagaz denies her request but tells her to keep on digging. Going back to Cashin and Luthen, they finally reach Aldhani. Luthen asks Cashin to come up with an alias that he will be using in the mission and he says Clem with no hesitation. After that, the old man hands him a necklace with a Kuati signet, which is a sky stone for a pendant, saying that it serves as his down payment. 
He notes that it costs more than 50,000 credits and that he should return it to him at the end of the mission. After that, Luthen goes out to talk to a woman named Vel, the leader of the Alhaini mission. As the old man anticipated, Vel argues about it, stating that they will conduct the mission in three days so putting in an additional person will be a challenge for the whole team. However, Luthen doesn't give her much of a choice and introduces Cashin to him as Clem. Then, he takes his leave while Vel and Cashin head to the camp. There, he meets the other members of the team who are Sinta, Nemec, Skeen, Terramin, and an Imperial Guard Lieutenant Gorn. As expected, most of them doubt if Cashin will be of any use, but Nemec is just happy that more people are starting to fight against the Empire. After settling down, the group fills Cashin in with a mission. According to them, the Altheni garrison is a depot for supplies, weapons, and the payroll for the entire Imperial sector. Their target is the payroll and they will enter the facility as the men posing as the guards while the ladies will sneak their way in. By taking advantage of a celestial event called the Eye of Althani, where 50 meteor showers happen all at once, they will enter, steal, and escape without any of the Imperial Guards noticing them until it's too late. Concurrently, in the corporate security headquarters in Morlana 1, Karn Mosk, and even the Clueless Hine are fired because of what happened to Ferex. In addition to that, Morlana 1 is now under permanent Imperial authority. Afterward, Karn goes home to his mother who greets him with a slap and a hug. In the meantime, back in Coruscant, Luthen cleans himself up and starts wearing a wig, fancy robe, and jewelry. It is then revealed that he is actually rich and an owner of a prestigious art gallery and uses this identity as a facade to cover up his involvement in the rebellion. Another notable person that is secretly part of the rebellion is Senator Ma. Together, they're secretly conversing on how to manage the flow of the budget of the rebellion. But this time, Mon tells Luthen that she needs to be more careful than she already is because she knows that her driver is a spy from the ISB. As it turns out, her account was audited and it is discovered that there is an unexplained 400,000 credit missing, which she actually donated to the rebellion. Due to that, Mon asks Luthen if she can ask somebody she knows for help yet he declines. In turn, the senator insists that it's the only way for her to keep helping them while staying in power to keep the fight in the higher league. The next day in Alvani, Cashin wakes up and finds out that all of his belongings are missing. As it turns out, Vel orders Skeen to go through his things for anything suspicious. Luckily, the Skystone necklace is in his pocket so Skeen didn't see it. Later on, Nemec approaches Cashin and shares his ideals with him. For him, what they are doing is very important. According to Nemec, the Empire seeks power, hence they utilize everything to oppress people. But in the rebellion they fight to seek nothing but freedom pointing out that it is the most natural thing in the world, contrary to the unnatural state of control that the Empire wants. Skeen then tells Cashin that Nemec is actually writing his own manifesto. A little later, they start rehearsing acting as an Imperial Guard, with Terramin posing as their commanding officer. The following morning, they start traveling to the Alvani garrison. On their way, Cashin asks Vel how an Imperial Guard like Gorn joined the rebellion. According to her, Gorn fell in love with a local woman once but she lost her because of the Empire. Since then, he lost his will to serve the Empire so he decided to join the Rebellion. At this point, Vel points out that everyone has their own Rebellion. Shortly, while the group is resting, Skeen sneaks behind Cashin and takes the necklace from him. Showing it to everyone, Skeen calls him a liar and says that the pendant of his necklace is worth 30,000, doubting his true intentions in joining their group. Vel tries to stop him but he insists on knowing the truth. Cassian, on the other hand, threatens to kill Skeen if he will not return the necklace but Terramin is trying to stop him as well. They only stop when Nemec warns them that a ship is coming from the valley that is heading to the garrison. Due to this, Skeen throws back the necklace to him and warns him that they're not done yet. Because of this, Cassian reveals to them that he's being paid to join them, not wanting to keep looking over his shoulder for Skeen. As expected, this surprises them so they ask Vel about it, which she eventually confirms. But since there's no backing out now, they continue on their way to the garrison to finish the mission. And at nightfall, the group finally reaches the garrison and lights up the signal so Gorn will know that they are now ready. Skeen also apologizes to Cashin by telling him about his brother that was killed by Imperial Guards. Since then, he starts hating the Empire so this fight is really personal for him as well as everybody else. Afterward, Vel tells Cashin that Terramin will be in charge of them from here on as she and Sinta will take their leave now. When the sun rises, Nemec approaches Cashin and tells him that he wasn't able to fall asleep and he's nervous that he will not be at his best when he needs it the most. Cassian, on the other hand, tells him that the excitement and adrenaline will kick in later and he will feel very energized. 
He also says that if they successfully finish the mission, he will be able to rest finally. Meanwhile, at the garrison, Commandant Jehold notes that the Danis, referring to the locals of Alvani, are the type of people that are easy to manipulate. He tells the colonel that for the past years, there were 15,000 pilgrims, but they are now down to less than 100. As it turns out, this is the last year that the locals will be allowed to go to the valley to celebrate the eye. While listening to this, Gorn's anger is fueled by remembering the love of his life. Afterward, he asks Gorn if they are now prepared for the festival, in which the lieutenant assures him that everything is set according to plan. Jehold then insists that the night must be perfect. Going back to the group, Terramin and Nemec are testing the communication line with Vel and Sinta. As it turns out, the ladies are on the other part of the river, waiting for their turn to swoop in. Subsequently, the men start to move and Cassian notices that Terramin is very used to giving orders. And to his surprise, Scheme reveals to him that Terramin was a former stormtrooper and that it was chaos when he first joined because they massacred Sinta's whole family. At this time, the meteors start passing over one by one. The Danis also are arriving so Gorn orders his men to make sure that they welcome the locals peacefully. Not long after, Cassian, Nemec, Terramin, and Skeen are now in position, dressed as Imperial soldiers that will be escorting the Danis. Inside the garrison, Jehold struggles to put on his sash due to his fat stomach which is always full. He then sees his son not wearing his Imperial blouse, but the boy says that he doesn't want to wear it. He also states that he's sick, which is then backed up by his mother. However, Jehol doesn't care about them and insists that they will do as they were told. Outside, the Danis finally arrive at the valley and they are greeted by Gorn. At this point, Gorn orders the soldiers to settle in for the night and enjoy the show, reminding them not to bother the locals. Meanwhile, he orders Terramin's unit to escort Jehol and his family, finally putting their plan into action. Shortly, the commandant, accompanied by his family and the colonel, exchanges goat skins with the elder of the Danis. After that, they go back inside the garrison, thinking that they will have a very good night feasting at a dining table while watching the eye. But as the elder of Vanis burns the skin they give, Cassian and the others point their guns at them, just in time for Vel and Sinted to mess with the garrison's communicator. The colonel then notices that Nemec is shaking so he points his gun at him, demanding that they let the boy go. Unexpectedly, he is shot dead by Sinta. Just then, the Thanis start their celebration, just as the group takes control of the control room and holds Jehold's family and other guards captive. Vel tells Jehold that he will be helping them to load the credits into the ship and that his family will die if he tries to go against them in any way. But if he cooperates, everyone will walk away with their lives. Subsequently, they all go down the vault to collect the credits except for Sinta who was left to guard the hostages. Arriving at the vault, they find the guards gambling so they also order them to work and load the credits into the ship. Jehold also tells them to cooperate, stating that they had his family. At first, everything seemed to be going so well. Cassian and Nemec prepare the ship for the escape and even Gorn goes down to the vault, revealing his allegiance to the rebellion to Jehold. However, a corporal intercepts Sintas and Nemec's channel, hearing them exchanging updates so he discovers that something is going on in the vault. Due to that, he takes several guards there. Seeing this, Gorn tries to lie their way out of this, but as the corporal sees Jehold having a heart attack due to tiredness, he realizes that Gorn has betrayed the Empire. At this moment, a shootout between the rebels and the Imperial guards takes place. Unfortunately, Gorn gets killed as the corporal shoots him while he's distracted by the dying commandant. Terramin also gets killed as Skeen fails to provide him cover while he is trying to run for the ship. Aside from them, Vel and Skeen manage to board the ship before it takes off. However, the sudden launch causes a crate of credits to crash into Nemec. Acting quickly, Vel gives him a med spike to give him a temporary boost. Then he guides Cashin into flying them right through the eye, away from the chasing TIE ships of the Empire. Meanwhile, Sinta successfully sneaks out of the garrison while everyone is busy watching the celestial spectacle. Although it's a successful mission, Nemec is still in critical condition. Vel and Skeen argue because Vel wants to continue escaping while Skeen states that they need to try to save Nemec. Cassian then chooses to save Nemec as he's the one piloting the ship, taking him to the doctor that Skeen knows. Unfortunately, Nemec still doesn't make it. At the same time outside, Skeen suggests to Cassian that they should just run away and split the money, revealing he's not really on the mission for the cause and that story about his brother was a lie. Because of that, Cassian shoots him dead immediately. Afterward, he goes inside the tent and discovers that Nemec is dead. With that, Cashin tells Vel about Skeen and tosses the necklace to her, asking her to give it back to Luthen. 
According to him, he will take his 200,000 credits as promised by Luthen and run away. But before letting him go, Vel gives him Nemec's manifesto, saying that it was his last wish. Episode 6 ends with the ISB and the Senate getting uproarious because of the incident in Althani, while Luthen is celebrating this little win for the rebellion.